Welcome to Sex and Happiness with Lori Handlers. Amazing sex and intimacy are just around the corner. While Lori puts the finishing touches on her new book, Sex and Happiness Over 60, please enjoy this show. It's one of her favorites from the Sex and Happiness Archives. When I think about images of soldiers being lovers, old World War II movies come into my mind. I picture Robert Mitchum and I picture John Wayne. I'm, I guess I'm aging myself here, but I, I picture these guys docking into a port and finding available ladies to kiss and smooch with and dance with. And, you know, possibly they never showed it back then, but it was their, the illusion that they were going to eventually make love to these ladies or sometimes come home to their lady waiting at home. My guest today claims to be a warrior turned lover. Sean Roop has been a student and teacher of life wisdom since 1989. He has a website and he runs something called Tantra Quest, which is a Tantra training center. So, Sean, welcome to my show. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, thanks. It's wonderful to have you. And I especially want to find out how... A trained warrior, you'll have to tell us what that training is, whatever, you know, how a warrior could turn into a lover and want to say that about himself. It's really interesting that uh, that my past, it feels like I've lived so many lives already, even though I'm I'm at the the, um, the, the ripe young age of of, of 38 now. Uh, When I was younger, I, I was in the military. I joined when I was 19 years old. But even before I went in the military, I actually joined the police academy. And at 18, I was attempting to become a police officer. And um, you were going to be a police officer, and and you didn't do that. I went to the police academy, and um, I am so blessed to have had a sergeant who actually was a a, a local uh, a police policeman at my at, in my city because I was going to I was in Orange County, California, and the interesting thing is all the little cities. Uh, all share one police academy, so it's not like one police academy for each police department. They all share one community college does the police academy for everyone. And so he happened to be one of the trainers, and he knew me, and he basically sat me down uh, about five, six weeks into the program, and he goes, look, here's the deal. You're 18 years old. You you can't even go into a bar to break up a, a fight. Do you realize that? Like, it'd be illegal <laughs> for you to walk into a bar to break up a fight and he said there's so much life to live (laughs) and and right now you're going to get involved in this and you're going to do the same thing i did which was you're going to become a cop you're not going to travel you're going to have three marriages like there's no need for this go be in the world be the world enjoy life if you want to be a cop it's always going to be here there's there's always going to be need for police officers and you don't have to worry about doing this right now and i was so at 18, so sure of what my path was. I wanted to protect and serve. That's what I want to do. I want to give to my community and my society in this, this way. And and I thought I could be a really good police officer, and, and that's where my my uh, my drive was coming from. But uh, but but he really supported me, and and uh, actually he put the screws to me. Is what he did. The, 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 the him and the other trainers make it made it so impossible. There was no way that I could actually pass. So I actually dropped out uh, soon. Uh, after that conversation. Well, that's and a very well, fortuitous break, you you might say. I mean, yeah. given who you are now, which we're going to yeah. find more, you know, find out more about, that was very astute of that man. And he must have seen something in you, Sean, that you might not have seen in yourself at that time. Could that be possible? I, I so think that's exactly what was going on, Lori. This, this, this individual was actually, even though a police officer, but he was a really wise man, and um, and and actually really enjoyed what he did and didn't take himself too seriously. I think that's what happens when people get too identified with a particular archetype, like a a warrior or a or or for instance a a, a, a police officer like that that cop archetype. But he, he just he he was a man, not a cop. Like he was really clear about that, and that's why I was so glad that he's a trainer. Like especially nowadays, like I, I'm so glad that he was out there training people uh, instead of some really hard nosed type of, of folks. But um, that that uh, I, I was really depressed that I that I dropped that I got washed out of the academy at 18, and um, and and then 
And then there on CNN were all these people lining up for Desert Shield in, in Saudi Arabia. And I thought, well, I'm not in the police academy. I, I, but there's a war going on. I, I, this is my war. I, I need to go be part of the war. And, um, so I went down and joined the military and, and, uh, and that was in the summer, uh, before Desert Storm ha- actually happened. So I had to wait. I, there were so many people that signed up during that time that I actually couldn't, I had to wait six months to go in the military. And, um, <laughs> there was a lot of opportunities for not to go in the military, but I decided to, to go in and, and I joined the Air Force. And I was in basic training during the entire war that lasted 10 days. <laughs> so I, I, there was no war for me in, in my career, but, uh, what, what oh. happened was while I was in the Air Force, um, uh, I, I became a trainer of, of law enforcement and, uh, and small arms training. So actually, uh, I was in anti-terrorism and, and learned, uh, how to teach people to shoot, um, guns and, and how to do close quarter combat. And that's, you know, that's where my path was for the next four years from that point, which is, <laughs> Uh, geez, that was in uh, 2000s, right? No, no, I'm sorry, that was in 90, 90, 1990. 1990? It was 91 to 95 is when I was in the Air Force. Okay, got it. So, it, well, the yeah, only it, thing it, so far that I, that resembles the you that I know now is the closed quarters. <laughs> the closed quarters. Yeah, that's about it. Well, and also the teaching. You know, the teachings and other things. Oh, right, right, right. Um, Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's okay because actually, you know, the, the, the military gave me some really wonderful things. One of those things was the ability to teach groups of people. Um, and, but, but, um, what, what happened for me was is I, I just went down such a path to the point where someone would invite me to go hunting and I, I would actually have this ability to go, no, it's not really fair. That's how good of a shot I was. Um, you know, give wow. me a, Beer, or give me a bow and arrow, I'll go hunting. But I'm not <laughs> see, to put a gun in my hands is not a fair. That's not a fair fight. That's how that's how accurate and and competent and skilled I was in 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 uh, combat. You were really like a no nonsense, like no kidding warrior that could you know you're you you're deadly in a certain way. Yeah. Wow. Between between the distance of two feet to 500 yards, I I, I had the advantage. Wow. Yep. It's yeah, amazing, right. and um, I just got to – I want to go back for a minute because it's always intrigues me when somebody wants to be a police officer or a warrior like that. Was your upbringing – I'm not going to psychoanalyze you, of course. I don't want to do that, but, I mean, <laughs> was your upbringing – like, was there anyone else in your family who was an officer or a marksman? No, that's the interesting part about that is that um, – I was I, I was raised in a very liberal household. Um, I was the only quote unquote Republican in the house. Um, I was I was really I, I I was a very interesting conservative kid in a in a, I grew up in Laguna Beach, California. It's a very liberal city, and my parents were spiritual but not religious, and and uh, they just shook their head at me and they didn't get it. My sister couldn't figure me out at all. She was a really big liberal and. And, uh, but I, I did have a brother and an uncle who also went in the, in the Air Force. And both of them at, at that time when I went in were millionaires. And I, and they, they said that they didn't need college, that the military gave them everything they needed. And they, neither one of them were officers, which I thought was really interesting. And they both went in the Air Force. So I went in the Air Force and didn't have to, I, I never flew, flew a plane or fixed a plane or, or did anything with planes for that matter. I, I, I got put into a very army like situation that the Air Force had to do, which was I, I actually did law enforcement in the military. I mean that's that's in the Air Force I was just the ground troop for for the for the Air Force. And um, it's a, but, but there was wow. no one else. I played army a lot. When I was a kid I, I used to sanitize and play army all the time. And so I think there was like this this desire to be the knight or the archetype of, of the warriors for sure. You mean, so you actually were one of these guys that I'm talking about in the World War II movies. You could have been Robert Mitchum in your fantasy okay. life. Yeah, I, 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 there was always that desire inside me as a young boy to be the hero. Like, yeah. it, it would have seemed really heroic for me to land on a grenade to save everyone else. Wow. And, and, so, and, yeah, so I can I see you were just, steeped in that archetype, you know, of yeah, warrior, absolutely. even from being a little boy. I mean, there are probably lots of boys 
who yeah. have that. I mean, I had I, my archetype was Joan of Arc. You know, I was right. going to go, you know, be burned at the stake for saving the planet. You know, <laughs> yeah. And you were going to step on a grenade to save the planet, to save humankind. Sure. So I, I sure. actually can identify with you a lot. And I yeah. imagine that lots of people can identify with that, Sean. I mean, it's not far-fetched it's, it's at the, all. Yeah, it's, it's totally the, selfless, the selflessness that seems so heroic and, 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 um, and of value in our society. Like, heroes are so valued in our society. And so as a, as a young boy trying to figure out his way, um, that's what it was. And so, um, it was, it was really interesting because actually it was my senior year that I made the decision to kind of go down that path, uh, in high school. But before all that, I wanted to be a filmmaker. I wanted to be creative and artistic and I wanted to be in the, in the, in the, the filmmaking business. And then, and then, uh, I, I, I won all these awards for being a filmmaker when I was in high school. And then when I applied to one school, because I thought I was bulletproof, and they gave me the Hollywood tweet treatment when I got denied a place in the school. I, I, my self-esteem couldn't handle it. No way. No way. It was way too much rejection for me. And I crumbled and I, and that's when the law enforcement, uh, was, was a, a next option. Right. Like your backup plan, but something that had always been a fantasy. So not so far. Oh, that. totally. Totally. Yes. And, and I always, always wanted to, so, so I was, and I was good at what I did. I was so good at it in 1994. Uh, uh, my, my third year in, I am one airman of the year, which is, um, like basically there's officers and airmen. I won airman of the year for the entire air force. Wow. So, yeah. So I, 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 not only was I, was I good at what I did, I excelled completely and, and was highly, highly, you know, rewarded and, and, and seen for what I did, but there's no money in that. I mean, all it is is another ribbon. All it is is another certificate or trophy. So, so I, 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 the reason why I got out of the military was because I saw so many, so many of my supervisors on food stamps, and I thought that was wrong. I, I didn't make sense, and also a lot of my na- na- naiveness around being a warrior was quickly replaced with the reality of what that means. Yes, quickly. yes, yes. Quickly. What was your love life like when you were actually enlisted in the Air Force? Messy. <laughs> what? Um, I was. It was very messy. Very messy. Um, what What was probably the biggest thing is that is that uh, I still had this idea that I should. Uh, I, I was. I was looking for for the, this this one person that was going to fulfill my everything, and I was kind of putting the cart before the horse with, with a lot of that. I, I was really bad at at my my dating scene. Because I was always, I was always, uh, um, evaluating, are they marriage material? Are they marriage material? Or do they like me? Would they marry me? And I'm serious, like it was really messy and my sex life was horrifically bad. I mean, it was just, um, it was embarrassing to the sense of, of, of my skills and my ability to really connect. I was a good, I was a giver and, and I was really available to, to, to give to people, um, in, in a sweet, sweet giving way. But I, but I didn't know how to receive. That's for sure. Not at all. Wow. I, 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 it was just, it was, yeah, it was dysfunctional. <laughs> um, and I didn't have a whole lot of lovers. I mean, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I, I, I really, I really had a lot of low self-esteem. Even though I was excelling in my career, when it came to my love life, I, I didn't have a lot of ability to, to really um, connect on a level that I felt comfortable with. That's for sure. You know, it's great. It's so great that you said that and actually that you laughed at it, too, because if we took that uh, example that you just gave, that you were, like, excelling in your military career, you were being awarded esteem that maybe no one else gets awarded very much. You know, most military people do not get, you know, the the, the primo award. And you did really year. Well, What? One person a year. Yeah, one person a year. So here you are at the top of your game in the military, and your love life is not good. It's, you know, it's messy. You have low self-esteem. I imagine, I'm just saying this because I'm sure there are people out there listening to this. I'm quite certain that there's plenty of people, and I could say men, but I think it's men and women who are at the top of their game in something. They could be a top athlete, a top business person, 
and yet their self-esteem is so low they have no idea how to actually give or receive 